Hey folks, it's Dominique back here with you. Please forgive my GPS, which will be absolutely 100% for sure interrupting us as I drive along here. I am on a little bit of a road trip. Um, hopefully the road sounds won't be too distracting for everybody, but if they are, please let me know and we will simply go forward knowing that this is not a format that works. <laughs> so. Uh, what we're going to be talking about tonight is, again, the topic of narcissistic abuse as well as cluster B personality disordered abuse in general. As you know, if you've listened to my show and or watched my YouTube channel, 1 in 25 people are narcissists. 1 in 25 people are sociopaths. This is a very pervasive uh, disorder, set of disorders, in fact. And in 1.8 miles, yes. exit to I-290 East the Chicago. There goes that darn GPS. So, as as you know, this is a very, very pervasive disorder, set of disorders, and this is um, something that I think really just needs to be addressed. Um, it needs to be ad addressed quite desperately. And what we're going to talk about today, though, is the subject. And please, please understand that I'm not by, in, by any means uh, suggesting that we all be selfish and cut out anyone going through narcissistic abuse or, or cluster B abuse from our lives. I am not suggesting that at all. But we're going to talk about uh, how to deal with folks in our lives who are victims of narcissistic, sociopathic, or other cluster B abuse. We're going to talk about how best to deal with these Watch people. out, Hazard reported ahead. And we're going to talk, okay, so I just thought I turned that off. Apparently it does not care and it's going to go ahead and continue talking. Um, so we're, we need to discuss how, how uh, cluster B abuse affects not just the abused, right? Not just the abused, but those in that person's life. Because it's not just exclusive it's not just exclusive to those who are being abused. It's actually something that um, absolutely, absolutely affects the people in the lives of the abuse uh, of the abuse victims, right? So it doesn't just affect the ab the abuse victim; it affects everybody in their life, and. You know, this is actually something that I'm bringing up uh, because not only have my clients been through this, I have been through it personally, and I've been through it recently. Um, and I, I don't want to get too personal with you guys, but I think that my situation is a really good example of um, how narcissistic and, and cluster B abuse can affect you know, so many people, not just the victim, the victim themselves. So I have someone in my life, uh, call this person a loved one. I'm not going to identify them any further than that. Um, I have a loved one in my life who is somebody that I have obviously had in my life for years, a, a period of, of years, and uh, is not just somebody I've met recently. And this person, oftentimes, um, they, now they're not aware that that they're being abused by a narcissist. They're being abused by a covert narcissist. They're not aware of it, and that's one reason among many that I am trying to be very careful. In 1,000 feet, of, exit right. Okay, I just turned the sound off again, and apparently it is going to go ahead and keep talking because it enjoys interrupting the show. So this person is somebody that I care very much for. Uh, they're unfortunately unaware that they are being abused by a narcissist. Exit right to I-290 uh, East, Chicago. GPS has quite a lot to say about this. Um, I do apologize, folks. I've turned this off uh, twice. So fun times here. Um, but this is somebody who, unfortunately, I am unable to continue to keep in my life on a regular basis because, um, unfortunately, the narcissist in their life dictates, the narcissist dictates who they can speak to, um, who, who they can
can interact with. Uh, the narcissist dictates every possible angle of their life. And I know that many of you guys have been through similar situations. Maybe you've lost a friend or a family member, a loved one. Uh, In 1.3 miles. Exit to exit 50. Maybe you have lost somebody that you care very deeply for because they're being abused. Because they are uh, totally under the control of somebody else. So it does affect people other than the abuse victim. It, it affects literally everybody around the abuse victim. So again, it, the narcissist or the cluster B is not just reaching out to abuse one individual. Uh, they're abusing everybody in that person's life. And as you know, because we've discussed this before, uh, we're going to go over it briefly again um, right now. Narcissists and cluster Bs in general do like to engage in a tactic called triangulation. Uh, which is where they will purposely, purposely try to make sure that their victim disengages from the people that they love and the people who love them. So they want to make sure that, that, that their victim, their target, uh, is not being looked after by loved ones. They want to make sure that nobody is going to reach out to that victim and say, hey, you know, there's something going on, I think, with your husband or with your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or what have you. They're, they want to make sure nobody is in that position where they can say, hey, you know, Joe Smith, I'm really concerned about what your wife is telling you to do. It doesn't feel right to me. How are you doing? How are you feeling about things? Are you doing okay? Do you need, do you need a friend? Can I support you? They absolutely don't want their victims to have anything like that in in their lives. They they can't abide that. They cannot abide that. And so they will do anything and everything in their power to make sure that um, their victims are totally isolated, totally alienated, and that they don't have anybody in their lives who love them and care for them enough to intervene on their behalf. Now, of course, uh, it's not our business always to intervene and always to come in and say, hey, I think there's something wrong with your relationship because it's very possible that that person may not be in a narcissistic or cluster B abusive relationship and what's going on may not be any of our business. So just a quick PSA on that front. There are times when we should not intervene. It, it's not our business to get into someone else's relationship, uh, but the, there are, of course, times that it is. When someone's being abused, I think we often overlook, unfortunately, as a culture and as a society, Americans tend to overlook uh, verbal and emotional uh, and spiritual abuse. They tend to see abuse as a black and white issue. Either you're being punched in the face or you're not being abused. Well, that's not the case. And if we see that a loved one is um, being emotionally abused, it is absolutely essential that somebody steps in and says, hey, I recognize that you're in pain right now. What, what can I do for you? I care about you. So if you're somebody who does have a loved one of any kind, as I do right now, who is being emotionally abused or manipulated by a narcissist, sociopath, or other cluster B personality disordered individual, I would, I would highly recommend that you intervene on their behalf. Now, you don't want to come in and say something like, hey, I think you're with a sociopath or a narcissist, or I think that your mom or your dad or your husband or wife or what have you is a narcissist or a sociopath, right? Because that is going to elicit a defensive response. You have to remember that this person has been gaslighted possibly for years. They have been, they have been um, indoctrinated into thinking that they are the problem. They're the only one that needs to change. They are somehow um, messed up in the head and they're not right. And so it's going to be very hard for this person to to hear something like that because they have been so indoctrinated to think that they are the one with the problem. So you're not going to get anywhere by saying, hey, Joe Smith, you know, I think your wife
wife is a sociopath or a narcissist. I, that's absolutely not the way to go. But what you can do is you can say, hey, you know, I, I see that you're in pain right now. I mean, nobody is going to, if somebody is genuinely in pain and you are a loved one of theirs, it's possible they're going to deny it. It's not highly likely, though. They're, they're going to say, you know what? Yeah, I am in pain. Yes, I am. And they're either going to say, you know, I really don't feel comfortable talking about it. Or they're going to say, yeah, um, I will open up to you about it. Hey, let's talk, right? So you're going to get one of two responses there. Very likely, you're, again, you're going to hear either, you know, yes, I am, but I don't want to talk about it right now. This is very a very tough subject for me. I'm trying to work on this. Thank you for reaching out. Or you're going to hear, hey, yeah, you know what? I do need to talk. I do need to talk. And I want you to try to be there for this person if and when they do open up and need to talk to you or want to talk to you. Um, that's a very big step for the, a victim of cluster B abuse, being able to open up and talk. And it's really important that we reach out when we're able, that we, that we reach out and that we, you know, again, without judgment, let that person know that we, that we recognize that they're hurting, that they're suffering, that they're in pain. Uh, I think that that's extremely important. And as somebody who, you know, does care for someone who is right now uh, being abused, it's very difficult uh, for for me. And it's very difficult for those of us around the person being abused because, as I said, oftentimes we are being shut out. We are being told, hey, it's none of your business. Uh, in, in my case, again, without identifying this person, and I do think this is just a great example of, you know, textbook, textbook Stockholm Syndrome, um, you know, of, of an abuse victim. Uh, the individual who is being abused has done this in the past several times and is doing this now and to, to me and to others in their life. What they're doing is they're pulling away. They're saying things like, well, I'm not allowed to talk with friends right now. I'm not allowed to talk with family members right now. I'm not allowed to talk with, with you, loved one. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not allowed to. I've messed up in, in this relationship I have with this narcissist and I'm sorry I'm just not allowed to, to speak with you or connect with you in any way. Now that is hurtful, it's awful, and it's not uncommon. Um, so I want you to keep that in mind if you are somebody who loves and or cares for uh, a narcissistic or cluster B abuse, abuse victim. I really want you to keep this in mind. It's very, very important to, to recognize that it's nothing personal toward you it's not about you. Now, unfortunately, in my situation, I kind of had to go ahead and put my foot down with this with this person because it's been many years of just this really negative cycle of behavior of, hey, you know, we're really close and we tell each other everything and we talk and, you know, we're, we're best buds and, you know, that's that, that is one hat that I feel like that person wears in my life, uh, among many, best friends. I, I care for this person, and they're one of my best friends, and it, it's hurtful to constantly lose your best friend, and then get them back, and then lose them, and that cycle repeats over and over and over again. So if you're in a place that I'm in, um, or a place similar, rather, to the place which I'm in right now, it's totally okay to step back and say, you know, I'm so sorry, I can't be a part of this unhealthy cycle anymore. I just, I really love you. I really care for you. And for my own health and wellness, I do have to go ahead and step back. But I, if you have to do that, I want to kind of caution you, if, if you will, um, to let this person know that even though you do have to step back, for your own health and wellness, that it, let them know it's not about them. It's about this behavioral cycle. It's about this unhealthy pattern repeating. It's not about them. It's not that you don't like or love them. It's not that you don't care for them. It's that you can't be a part of the cycle anymore because it's not it's not working for you mentally or emotionally or in whatever way. It's not working for you. And I want you to leave them with a, a similar 
similar statement uh, to the one that I used with my loved one. Say something like, you know, uh, although I can't be, you know, waiting for your text or phone call here because I know that it's not going to come and I can't be a, a part of this unhealthy pattern anymore, I am going to go ahead and have an open door policy if you physically would like to come to my house and speak with me because I do love and care for you and because I do value you. And so I want you to know that although I have to disrupt this pattern that's very unhealthy and that's not working for either of us, I am here for you in this way. So you're drawing your boundaries, but you're also saying, and if you really, if you need me or if you'd like to rethink, you know, what you've just said or rethink this pattern, my door is open. I think it's very important to let that person know that your door is open. Um, you know, if you feel comfortable, of course. Uh, hopefully this person is not, you know, returning or, or uh, perpetuating the cycle of abuse with you. And if they are, obviously that's a whole different story. So if you have to kind of step back or end that unhealthy pattern, that is what I would advise you to say. Now, I want to talk to those of you who are not yet at that point. So I kind of wanted to get that portion of the discussion out of the way because I would like to speak with those of you who aren't at that point and hopefully who won't ever be, um, you know, who won't ever have the misfortune of getting to that point. So if you have someone in your life that is the victim of cluster B abuse, whether it's narcissistic, sociopathic, borderline histrionic abuse, I really want you to think about, um, again, keeping that open door policy with them, making sure that they know that they are loved and cared for, that your door is open, that your, you know, that the phone will be picked up when they call. Obviously, if you're dealing with somebody who's extremely codependent, you can't physically pick the phone up every single time they call, but let them know that your door is open, that the phone will be picked up, um, or the call will be returned, that you're there for them, that you love them and care for them, and, you know, that you're not going to leave them. Uh, unfortunately, people who have codependency or what's now called self-love deficit disorder, uh, they they often feel that they're not worthy of love and that you will leave them. Now, this is very different than somebody who is a borderline personality disorder um, diagnosis, right? This is very different than something like that. This is somebody who has been through so much abuse and so much negativity that they literally don't think that people love them or should love them or have any right to love them and they don't feel that they have any right in turn to be loved or to be cared for. So um, it's, it's important to make sure that person is aware that you're there for them and that you're not going to just, you know, let them fall by the wayside, that you're not going to let your relationship with them go. Um, and, and again, if I just want to remind you that if you are feeling like you're being put through an unhealthy pattern, I do want you to be able to make your own boundaries, to write your own boundaries and to make sure that you're enforcing them. But you can do that while still having a relationship with this person. The one thing you'll need to keep in mind, however, is that this person is going to pretty much be told on a daily basis what an awful human they are and how nobody cares about them. And if their abuser finds out that you in particular are somebody who's really standing there, you know, standing by their side and uh, that who really wants to be there for them, the abuser might try to target you with a smear campaign of some sort. Uh, something along the lines of, uh, well, you know, Dominique really doesn't care for you. Um, I, you know, she, she didn't pick up your call, but now she's on the phone right now chatting with her best friend. What do you think about that? Dominique only stays in your life because she feels bad for you. So, so they're going to be saying things like that to tr trick the person into, um, you know, imagining in their mind that you really don't care for them. So if you're getting any kind of energy from them that 
is leading you to believe that they feel that you don't care for them, uh, you know, remind them. You don't have to do it constantly and certainly don't make a pest of yourself doing it and don't psych them out because you're reminding them so much that they think there is a problem, right? But take any genuine opportunity that presents itself to remind that person that they're loved and cared for and that there's somebody who matters to you. Uh, and, you know, that's the best thing you can do to counteract that smear campaign that's going to be kind of simultaneously directed at you and at the victim um, in question. It's the best thing you can possibly do. And I do want you to remember not to be too hard on yourself if you're, if you're becoming upset, if you're feeling like, you know, your feelings aren't being considered, if you're becoming upset, if you're feeling like, um, you know, you're getting a raw deal or something. I, I want you to remember that there is very likely a smear campaign being run in the background, in the shadows, because... As you know, narcissists and other cluster B disordered individuals um, work well in the shadows. They don't like to come out into the light of day and uh, say hateful things and uh, operate from a place of hate and use these smear campaign tactics. That even the ones who are very overt are going to use tactics that are, you know, befitting of the description of covert narcissism. So don't think that just because you're dealing with an overt narcissist that all of the things they're going to be doing are out in the open. That's just not the case. So, and if you're dealing with a covert narcissist or a sociopath, well, there you go. Uh, you know that pretty much everything that happens is going to take place in the shadows under the table. It's not going to be, you know, right out in the open. And you're going to definitely start noticing signs and symptoms from the abused person that you love and care for uh, first before you hear anything from the actual abuser. And if you're anything like me, maybe you don't have contact with the abuser. Maybe you only have contact with the victim. Excuse me while I take a bite of my sandwich. super professional show here, talking with our mouths full, dead air, GPS in the background, highway noise. I mean, what more could you ask for? Am I right? You're welcome, America. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening in to this wonderfully professional show. But, um, you know, I just think this is a topic that's under, uh, under addressed. It's not talked about enough. The impact that the actual abuser has directly on the abused person is it's really important to talk about but it's not the only way that uh, cluster B individual can can impact you it's just not it they impact you know that's why those one in in 25 people impact the other 24 people around them I mean that's and not only do they impact only the people around them, but it branches out. They impact those people and the people in their lives and the people in their lives. And, you know, one, so it goes on and on and on. Just one narcissist, one cluster B individual can do a lot of damage, folks. So it's so important to be able to identify those red flags um, right, right off the bat, really. It's so important to be able to identify those red flag behaviors and to identify, again, if, you're, if you have an abused person in your life who is currently, or not only who's currently going through the abuse, but somebody who's just gotten free of the abuse, you know, that's a long process. That's a long healing process. So if you have someone in your life who's currently being abused or who is getting out of the abuse or has just gotten out of the abuse cycle, be patient with them, be there for them, um, and just know that you're not alone, and that I, I and many other people out there know that this abuse is impacting you. I, I know that, I get that, I feel for you, and I have your back, and so many of us out there feel the same way. You're not alone, we've got your back. Uh, you know, you're good. We've 
we've got you. We've got you. You're not the only person going through this. And please, by, by all means, you know, recognize your emotions and your feelings uh, on this. If you're feeling hurt or abandoned by your abused loved one, that's okay. You know, it's very, it's very possible that you are being abandoned by that person. That you have been or are being hurt by them. That's okay. It's okay to feel that way. Don't beat yourself up. I have a lot of people who write in and a lot of clients who come in who feel like there's something wrong with them because they're upset with, you know, this abused person in their life. Well, no, absolutely not. Um, it, that's human nature. If somebody is being hurtful to you, you're going to be upset and, and that's okay. So I just want to remind you of that. You're you're good. You're okay. It's okay if you're hurt. It's okay if you're feeling upset or feeling badly about this. Um, I know in my situation uh, recently, it was really, I, I knew I had to do it and I knew I had to do it right away, but it was one of the hardest things I've done because this is somebody I really care about and I know that they, because they are being abused and, you know, by the way, they don't listen to this show, so there's no danger of them hearing this. And gosh, if they did, I would hope that they would come to me and, you know, we would have a personal one-on-one -on -one talk. But uh, just FYI for anybody who's out there thinking, hmm, is she talking about someone who's listening? I am not. Uh, they would never be allowed to listen, to be honest. But I know what I, what I was feeling was a sense of you know, abandonment, hurt. I felt like, wow, you're, you're going to go through this cycle again. You're going to let this abuser win again. Um, you know, I can't do this anymore. And although it was the toughest, one of the toughest things I've done, one of the toughest actions I've taken, I should say, to, you know, stand by my boundaries and to stand up for my, my rights as a human, as, a, as someone with emotions and feelings that are valid, um, it was very tough for me. But I knew I had to do it. And, you know, this is somebody who, in my life at least, this is somebody who I, I know feels badly about doing this. I know they feel very badly. Uh, however, it does not give them the right to act that way. And I, I certainly do hope that, that they will at some point uh, come to me, you know, on equal footing and, and meet with me in person and maybe we can sit down and talk about this. Uh, again, like I mentioned to you, uh, those of you who are listening earlier, I, I would never say, hey, I think that so-and-so is abusing you or I think that so-and-so is a narcissist, a covert narcissist, which I know is what the person who is abusing my loved one is. But I, it's not appropriate for me to say that, to say, oh, hey, you know, I know this important person in your life is abusing you and is a narcissist. Um, it's not going to go over well. So the only thing I can do is continue to be there for, for this person without, um, you know, disrespecting my boundaries. So I hope that this has given you a little bit to kind of think about, and I hope that this has given you a new perspective if you're going through this yourself. Uh, please feel free to write in. I've given my uh, business email here in the description box. Uh, please feel free to write in if you've been through a similar situation. Uh, please feel free to write in and let me know. Share that with me. If you'd like your uh, first name to be used, let me know. If you'd like to be kept anonymous or if you'd like for me to find like a pseudonym for you, also let me know. I want to know what you're comfortable with um, as far as sharing and I want to be able to make sure that you know I'm answering your question. I don't want to always say anonymous writes in and says, you know. So feel free to write in with any personal experiences you'd like to share, any questions on this specific topic. Please uh, list in the subject line that you are a listener or YouTube viewer, depending on how you are uh, hearing this show right now. And go ahead and just write in and let me know your story. And I will share it on one of my upcoming podcasts or and or, I should say, uh, YouTube videos. So I want to hear what you guys have to say and what your experiences are. 
I know that I am not the only person out there going through this. I know that some of my clients are not the only people out there going through this. And again, I just want to assure you that there is nothing wrong with you. You're, you're fine. You're good. It's okay for you to be angry, hurt, and upset with this person who is being abused, even though you know that they're being abused and you know that they're the victim. They're not the only victim. You know, you are being affected as well. And I want you to try to internalize that fact and try to make sure that you're, that you're aware that you're not guilty of anything yourself. Uh, I hope that some of the advice on how to speak to your loved one is helpful to you. If it is, let me know. And if you feel like you would like to talk about this some more, and if you'd like some more pertinent advice on the subject, also feel free to, to let me know in the comments section. Thank you so much for listening in. I do apologize for the technical difficulties as we uh, started off the show. And I thank you so much for listening. I'll be back with a video very soon. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Be well, be safe, and I hope that you have a wonderful cluster be free and abuse-free uh, day and night. Thanks. Have a good one.